This video introduces a method called Kramer's Rule for solving linear systems of equations. Determinants of matrices, that quantity associated with all square matrices, serve a number of purposes. One of them is to allow us to solve systems of linear equations of the form ax equal to b that we've seen earlier. Now we can use the determinant of the matrix A and some associated similar matrices to find the elements of the solution vector x. Doing this is what we call Kramer's rule. So here's how it works. Kramer's rule for solving AX equals B. Given a system of N equations and N unknowns, so first of all that's an important point to note. We have to have a square system, the same number of equations as variables. Now if we write that in the form AX equal to B, the matrix vector form, then the individual elements of the solution vector X are given by these N equations. Essentially it works like this. The first part of the x vector, x1, is given by the determinant of some matrix called A1 divided by the determinant of the A matrix. But what exactly is this A1 matrix? Well that's what the last line here tells us. It says that AI, well let's just talk about A1 for the moment, it's the A matrix but with its ith column replaced by B. So A1 would be all of the elements of A except the first column is replaced by the values on the right hand side of our original equation. And the same idea follows down the line for all the rest of the values in the x vector. So the last one, let's just say it was a 4x4 four four system, we'd have x4 would be equal to the determinant of the A4 matrix divided by the determinant of the A matrix. So we're using this A matrix determinant over and over again and the other determinant that we're looking for is the A matrix with its ith column, or in this case the fourth column, replaced by the b vector. So let's check out an example. We've got to solve this system of three equations, and we've got x, y, z, three unknowns in there, so that's okay. Three by three means we can use Kramer's rule. First thing we need to do is write it in matrix form, so let's just do that. Pull out the coefficients, we've got one, one, and one across the top, minus one, one, and two in the middle, and down the bottom zero x's 1y and minus 1z. And we write our solution vector x, y, and z. And on the right hand side 0, 5, and 0. So straight away there we can identify the A matrix, the coefficient matrix, solution vector x, and the right hand side vector b. So we've got our ax and b. Now Kramer's rule, remember we need to form these determinants of the A matrix and the A matrix with its columns replaced. We're going to need to do four in total. Now, you might want to try this yourself, so pause the video, have a few minutes to try that one yourself, and then come back and follow through with me. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is look for the first variable, x1. Now, Kramer's rule says x1 will be the ratio of these two determinants, the determinant of a1, that's a with its first column replaced by b, and the determinant of a. We're going to use that determinant of A over and over again. So I'm going to calculate that over here on the right hand side. We've got determinant of A, the determinant of that array of numbers. As usual, I'll use zeros as much as possible to cut down on the work. So I'm going to have zero. I'm going to go across the third row. I'm going to have plus one, the number one times minus one to the row three plus column two. That's going to be a five. And then we want the determinant of, cross it out, and we're left with one, one, minus one, and two. And then the last element, we've got minus 1. It's going to be multiplied by minus 1 to the 6. Because that's in row 3 and column 3. 3 plus 3 is 6. And the determinant of 1, 1, minus 1, and 1. Okay, so just evaluating all of those. We've got a minus 1 there. Uh, 2, take away minus 1 is going to be 3. And then we've got minus 1 by 1 is going to be minus 1 again. 1, take minus 1 is going to be 2. So we end up with minus 5 for our determinant of A. Okay, so you might want to actually try to calculate the others yourself, but let's just look at A1. I'm going to quickly show you that that should be the determinant of not this array of numbers, but replacing that first column with B. So remember B was 0, 5, 0. So we're going to have 0, 5, 0, and then the rest of A as normal. 1, 2, and minus 1. And that one I can tell you, uh, you should try to calculate this one yourself, but I'm going to save a little bit of time and say that's 10. 
determinant of a2, we'd replace the second column of a with b in that case, and we'd get minus 5. And the determinant of a3 is going to be minus 5 again. So then we can go back and fit in all of the values for our x's. So the determinant of a1 was 10. We need to divide that by the determinant of a, which was minus 5. And that's going to give us minus 2 for x1 x2 is going to be the determinant of a2 matrix over the determinant of a and that's going to be minus 5 on minus 5 or 1 and finally x3 is going to be the determinant of a3 over the determinant of a again minus 5 on minus 5 and that's going to be 1 as well so we have our solution for the original set of equations these three equations here and I seem to, for some reason, have called this x1, x2, and x3. I should have actually called those x, y, and z. So x equals minus 2, y equals 1, and z equals 1. Okay, so that's pretty much it for Cramer's Rule. Cramer's Rule is fairly easy to apply as long as you can calculate determinants. Uh, it's got a little efficiency in there because we reuse the determinant of a over and over again. But actually calculating determinants is quite costly. So you saw how long that took for a 3x3 three three system, and we already know it takes quite a while for anything bigger than that. We've done some of those examples before. Even when you're using a computer, determinants are considered to be a little bit costly. So Cramer's rule does have some drawbacks. Another thing is that it only works for square systems, n by n systems. So we can't use it if we have more equations than unknowns and vice versa. And also there's the problem that occurs when you have a determinant of the coefficient matrix is zero. We'd always be trying to divide by zero, as you can see in all these calculations. And of course that's not going to work. So Cramer's rule can't really be used when you have a determinant of a equal to zero. So that's pretty much it for the Cramer's rule video. Uh, if you're looking at other texts, check out how they look at Cramer's rule. Make sure you're attempting your exercises and note down how to use Cramer's rule in your cheat sheet.